Hey Phantomaniacs, welcome to the newest unboxing here on the Needless Things YouTube channel. Today's unboxing is brought to you by Audible Interlude, a G.I. Joe podcast available the first Friday of every month. Although this week we have a very special, special mission uh, where we review Snake Eyes. G.I. Joe Origins. So please check that out wherever you find your podcasts. And today, on the Needless Things YouTube channel, I am taking a look at Storm Shadow from G.I. Joe Snake Eyes Origins. I wanted to wait until I had seen the movie to review these figures. I actually got them last week uh, and still haven't really seen them in stores again. So they're, they're showing up, but they're not plentiful yet. I'm sure they will be, especially with Target having a reset coming up right at the beginning of August, I believe. I think these will be very easy to find. And that's a good thing because they look pretty cool. And to hear our full thoughts on the movie itself, please tune in to Audible Interlude. Uh, so, great packaging, uh, cool art on the side, making Storm Shadow look sort of dangerous and mysterious. I like it. Uh, on the back here, got a little action pose, getting ready to draw that sword and cause some problems for somebody. And the design I'll get into once I open the figure up. Uh, nice window box on the front. The Arashikage symbol up there on the top side. And uh, his specialties. Skulls. Swords. Netting. And throwing stars. Of course. Uh, and if you want to see what the actual specialties are, please check out G.I.Joe.com. Uh, back of the box, unlike the rest of the Classified series, it doesn't have the cool picture of, like... Tons and tons of characters, some of whom we haven't seen yet. Uh, it's just sort of the movie uh, splash right here, which I think looks cool. It's great. Uh, I like that the size and everything fits with classified series, since these are indeed classified series figures. Uh, but it stands out because you have uh, the different, I guess, uh, background... Uh, as, as it were, wallpaper. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you want to call it, but it's a different style from the standard classified series releases. Uh, but at the same time, I don't know how I feel about the, be these uh, being numbered within the regular classified series line. Uh, it seems odd to me since these visually aren't totally aesthetically compatible with the regular classified series releases. I, I, I don't know. I'm a little torn on that. I would... I would prefer it if this were some kind of subline. Uh, although even the Cobra Island subline is numbered in sequence with the regular line, so whatever. You know what? It's time to bust out my trusty 1964 box cutter. Slice right through that tape, and let's open this guy up and see uh, how well they've done bringing Andrew Koji to life in plastic form. Uh, Storm Shadow was probably my favorite character in the movie. I will tell you that much. Uh, I will not spoil anything in the movie. If you want the full review, like I said, check out Audible Interlude, available wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, but I was really, really impressed with how they handled uh, Tommy. Uh, it was it was cool. It's different, but it's cool. Let's get all of these different pieces out of here. As always, no rubber bands. Very well, no use of tape in this one. If you watched Baroness yesterday, you saw that her glasses were secured with a small piece of tape. Uh, but I love that Hasbro goes out of their way to avoid rubber bands or twist ties or anything else because those can those can mess up the figure, quite frankly. Uh, and we don't want anything going on in our packaging that messes up our figures, do we? No, we do not. Uh, let's take a look at Snake Eyes. He is an off white rather than the pure white that we typically associate with this character. Uh, I've, I'm of two minds about that. One, he looks better in hand than he did in all the pictures on the internet. It is not quite as, like, eggnog <laughs> colored as it appeared to be in all the promotional stuff. It It is a... And it's a better white than the Arctic Storm Shadow that we already have in the Classified series. This is... It's not white-white, but it just looks better. And... You know, as much as I'd like a pure white, have we gotten to a point yet in toy manufacturing where they can produce something using different kinds of plastics? Because this isn't all, I don't believe this is all the same kind of PVC plastic. Uh, some of it's a little different than others. I don't know. I could be wrong. Uh, I'm no chemist or plastic expert. 
But have we reached a point yet in toy manufacturing where we can put out a white toy and it stays white and doesn't get yellowed? Because I would rather have this off-white color than a yellowed pure white. Uh, and I'll tell you, I think the answer to that question is no, we're not at that point. Because I recently bought a Stormtrooper helmet where the faceplate on it is already yellowed right out of the box. So... If the decision, if the choice we have to make is this color of white or yellowed pure white, give me this color of white. And it doesn't look bad. It actually looks really cool. Uh, if, we, if we could get a pure white that would stay pure white, that would be my choice. But if not, this, this is good. Uh, so I love this costume design. I understand it is uh, part of the movie, without giving anything away, is that... The, basically the ninja lifestyle, I guess, has to be updated. It has to change with the times. I feel like they give a pretty good explanation for why things are not straight up just traditional ninjas, and I'm okay with it. Uh, this is somewhat reminiscent of Storm Shadow from the previous G.I. Joe movies, which are not connected to Origins in any way, by the way. Uh, but it looks cool. He still looks... He looks like a modern ninja. I like it. And I like... Uh, we've got the silver detailing here he's got the black for where uh or actually that's not even black it, it looked that way in the light but i'm looking at it now and that's actually not only is that painted zipper detail it's sculpted as well if you can tell they're pretty darn impressive i like it i love the way his collar folds right here uh they've done a really good job of giving this tons of layers lots of interesting pieces to look at uh the cut joint at the bicep is not super successful but isn't terrible because it's right under that armor shoulder pad. So it, it doesn't distract as much as it would if this were just fabric all the way down. Uh, of course, butterfly shoulders, double jointed elbows uh, that are pretty successful with not messing up the aesthetics too badly. Uh, and then you'll notice he's got the fingerless gloves, which some people don't care for this. I don't mind things being sculpted with a, the finger in the trigger position. I'm trying to get that in focus. There we go. That doesn't bother me. He can hold a sword like that, and it's okay. Uh, he does not include a gun, but if you want the figure to hold a gun, uh, I don't know. I guess it's just personal choice whether you'd rather have just a fist that holds a gun and the trigger guard sits over the finger. Or if you like having the finger out. I don't know. It, it, this doesn't bother me, though. Because when he's holding those swords... And we'll go ahead and put those in his hands right now. Because, of course, we want to see Storm Shadow with his cool swords. Like, that looks fine to me. That doesn't bother me at all. It's perfectly fine. All right. Let's, uh, let's look at the figure a little bit more. Because something I noticed in those early images that I did not think I was going to like, and we're going to find out right now, these cut joints at the top of the thigh, he's got the sculpted material for his trousers, and when you turn those cut joints, uh, eh, I mean, it disrupts the sculpt. It doesn't look great. It doesn't look quite as bad as it did in some of the pictures that I saw. Uh, he does have ratcheting. I don't know if you can hear this. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, he's got a ratcheting joint in there. And he's got the drop-down hip joint as well. Oh, and this is a softer piece of plastic right here. Uh, and then the double-jointed knee. So he can get some really nice ninja poses and his... Uh, Part of his jacket that hangs down here is a very soft plastic, so that doesn't interfere with this posing at all. Uh, the foot has the the joint we're all familiar with now. I mean, he's he's got the same articulation as pretty much any six inch figure you buy now. Uh, but you can see the the cut joint there really does disrupt that sculpt. And I don't know what the good answer is. Do we sculpt less detail here and just give him sort of this big pantaloon look? Or what? What? I don't know. Uh, all right. So, figure looks great. Uh, the off-whiteness is fine with me if that's our option. 
I would like, and, and I'm not sitting here looking at a model of the movie, but it seems like there should be a little difference in something with his lower legs. It's it's uh, got a gloss, so it's armor, clearly. And it actually does, this part is glossy, and then this part is less glossy. Uh, but I just feel like a little bit of paint somewhere in here would have been nice. But at the same time, if you put pure white paint on him I, I don't know if he's going to look as good so this uniform color might have been the better way to go uh, all right let's pop that mast which look at those angry eyes those are those are storm shadows eyes right there i mean tr comic book cartoon whatever source you want to look at that storm shadow that anger i love it he is the shadow before the storm uh, let's pop on this Andrew Koji head, which again, I think, oh man, dropped it on the floor. Classic needless things. I don't know how easily this is going to pop on here. Not very seems to be the answer. Because the ball joint doesn't want to stay upright. Oh my gosh. Come on. There we go. Okay. Uh, so anyway, uh, Andrew Koji, I thought, did a phenomenal job. Uh, he was my favorite part of the movie. He was awesome. His portrayal of Tommy uh, goes through some changes as the movie goes on, and he handles them fantastically. I love the scar right here. So that sculpt looks awesome. Nice work there. And I'll probably end up displaying him like this. I just think that's a great look. And I, like I said, I like the actor so much, I want him on my shelf. All right, let's get our back piece on here that just plugs right in. I don't know how great that's going to look. We're going to give that an okay. Uh, and you can see, if you plug it in with those straight, that's not right. Adjust those just a little bit. That's fine. I thought that was going to stick out a little bit more than it does, but that's that's not a problem at all. Uh, swords slide right in there, giving him that cool storm shadow look that we all know and love. Oh, and you can see these are actually, the slots are molded in the shape of the sword. So actually, I think I might have put that in wrong. That goes that way. Is this whole thing upside? Oh, they go in like that. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. So when he pulls them out, which, <laughs> what, a, what a challenge that's going to be. Yeah, that's not quite going to happen. When he pulls them out, they'll be facing the correct direction. He won't have to flip this one over for the blade to be facing forward. Very interesting. So let's take a look now, because looking at the package art, I think I see a little bit of difference here. Yeah, he's got full scabbards there and I could not tell you what it looked like in the movie but I do doubt that his swords were just sticking out like this uh not a big fan of this I I, I feel like they could have done better than this little plug-in piece with these exposed blades I, I don't I don't love this uh but again not a huge deal because when I put this guy on the shelf he is going to have those blades out and ready for action. Uh, I think Hasbro did a really nice job with this figure. Like I said, he's my favorite character from the movie. Uh, they did him justice. They've got a great likeness of Andrew Koji here. Uh, I almost wish this face was angry too, but I get that. It, I get why it's not because this is kind of your default head. So you, you want it to be more of a neutral expression for, for those purposes. But I would buy a suited Storm Shadow. I would buy a Storm Shadow like he looked at the beginning of the movie. Uh, I like the character that much that if they choose to give us any more, which I, I kind of doubt they will, but if they do, uh, I'm all in. I like this guy. I'm happy to have the figure. I'm glad I found him before I saw the movie because if I had seen the movie and then not been able to find the figure, it would have driven me nuts. Uh, thanks for watching, you guys. Please like, subscribe, share, and remember to check out audibleinterlude.com.
this week for your Snake Eyes movie review and next week for our newest episode. Thanks for watching, you guys. Please like, subscribe, share. And, well, he, he's not going to say Cobra. So I'll say, yo, Joe. Smash that like button if you like needless things.